Hello everyone, this is Michael from Blue Road Home Studio. First of all, I just wanna thank all those that have subscribed, all of you that have liked my videos, all of you that have left comments. I really enjoy seeing your comments, so thank you so much. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Today's tutorial is all about the record to MIDI here function, but particularly using third-party plugins instead of the stock logic arpeggiators, chord generators. You can actually use third-party plugins in my case, we're gonna use uh, the Reason Rack and we're gonna use the Baseline Generator. Now you can actually use other third-party plugins for this, but there's a caveat to it and we'll get to that. Before we get to that third-party plugin though, let me at least show you what it does just in case you haven't used this before and you don't know what it is. You can also just skip ahead if you already know what it is. So let's get into it. So I just have a sampler instrument, native to Logic of course, and I just have a regular piano set up, it's a grand piano. Okay, it's just the standard piano. Now, let's say I wanna add an arpeggiator. Well, we can do that very simply with the Logic built-in arpeggiator, right? And let's just go with the up and down. So here's what we get. I'm playing a C minor chord. Uh, you can't see my, my keyboard, but that's what I'm playing. Yeah, okay, so that's a little fast. I think I'll switch it to eighth, okay. Okay, so very simple. Uh, we're not gonna make this complicated. I'm just trying to show you what, what this does. So I'm gonna move this over. Now, let's say I wanted to actually record the notes individually of this arpeggiator so that I can mess with them in the piano roll. So I wanna have these actually come out as the notes that are being played in the order that they're being played, okay? Very easy to do now, okay? So if you click over on the arp here, you can go down to record MIDI to track here. This is a very cool function. I really like it. Uh, I think it's, it's very, very useful. They, I wish they had added it sooner. Um, and watch what happens. So I'm just gonna hit record MIDI to track here, okay? You will notice two little triangle icons. That means that when we hit record, whatever I play, the notes aren't gonna come in as full chords, even though I'm holding it as a full chord, they're gonna come in as what the arpeggiator is playing. That's what the function does. So let's go ahead and hit record. Kind of changed the note there. But now check out what happened here. Now, and I'll just close this out but so you can see it a little better. But now, check it out. We have the arpeggiated pattern. And I can go ahead and just, uh, I can just, Disable that, and now this is what's playing. Kind of cool because I think now you have a lot more control. You can do fun stuff with arpeggiators, but you can actually work with the notes in the piano roll, which is so much easier, and it gives you so much more control. You can change, you know, you can change whatever. You can change the timing, you can change the feel, you can do whatever you want. Okay, and the cool thing is, you can actually add multiple instances here. Say like I wanted to add a chord trigger as well, okay? Now, one thing when you do this, you wanna make sure that the bottom, the bottom, whatever it is, modifier, modulator, chord trigger, whatever it is, you wanna hit record to MIDI track here. Okay, so now it's on the bottom, the triangles are on the bottom, and that will record both the chord trigger and the ARP. So let's take a look at that really quick and then we will get into the third party stuff because there's a little bit of a nuance to it, but it's very easy. All right, that sounds like a kind of a mess, but anyway, you can at least see, it doesn't work well with that C minor. But now you can see like it's recorded both the arpeggiator and it's recorded all the chord notes. Pretty cool. You used to be able to do this without it, but you had, to, you had to do multiple steps, so this makes it a lot easier. All right, so let's move on to the real purpose of the video. That's just to tell you what that does. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mute this. I'm gonna create a new instrument. I'm just gonna create a new software instrument. Now, under the instrument, I'm gonna set up my Reason my Reason plugin rack, and I'm just gonna go stereo, okay? Let that come up. 
There we go. Now, first I'm just going to select the instrument that I want. Uh, I'm not subscribed to the Reason Racks subscription service. I don't really like those subscription services, but these are just this is just stuff that I own. Most of this just comes with Reason. Anyway, there's a monotone bass synthesizer. We're going to be using a a bass uh, generator, so let's just we'll pick something on the monotone, and I'll just pick something like Blasta. This is kind of a cool little preset. Kind of cool, right? Okay, now ordinarily, if I wanted to use the bass generator on this, I would add a device and then I would go to players. Yes, I would go to players and I would go to baseline generator. You see, it's right here at the top. So this is one that I bought. It's actually really inexpensive. And what you do is you move this in front of the bass. So the order goes this generator, which feeds into that. And now uh, if I just hit play, I don't even have to touch anything, but it's just going to generate this random bass line, okay? <laughs> not that interesting of a bass line, but it'll do for this tutorial. But the problem is we can't actually record the MIDI notes in of what that bass player is generating because if you'll notice, that option is not up here, okay? We need to move this, this bass generator up into the MIDI effects, and I'll show you how to do that. So first things, I will actually delete this from here. So I'm only left with just the instrument. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the rack also, and I'm gonna go to audio units, and then I'm gonna go to Reason Studios. I'm gonna open the Reason Rack plugin here under the MIDI effects. That's the caveat, okay? If you have third-party stuff, there has to be a MIDI effects version of it, okay? So that's the one thing. If you have native instrument stuff, you can try this out with native instruments. They have a ton of stuff. But what we're gonna do is then, I'm not gonna add the instrument there, I'm just gonna add the generator. So I'm gonna go to players, Baseline generator, okay, and I'm just adding the generator up here. Okay, now, now if I play it, same thing happens, except now we have the option here, because this is listed up here, we can actually go record MIDI to track here. Pretty cool. So now I'll just hit record. And there you go. And then, of course, I can just make a four bar loop out of it, but I can do whatever with this. But now the beauty is we have this in the piano roll and we can adjust this, change the notes, adjust the timing. You have so much more control. Don't get me wrong. I think they did a good job with, with this bass generator, but it is, it's not so intuitive how you change the notes per se. I'd much rather be changing the notes in here in the piano roll than, than kind of messing around with it like up here. You see, it, it's, it's kind of tedious, I think. I mean, it works well if you do it like that, but if you can get it into the piano roll and have much more control over it, then why not, you know? So now you'll see here, I'll just cycle this. We have the bass recorded. Now this is kind of cool too though. Uh, I'll just show you this. Um, you don't have to use, you know, you can use whatever instrument you want. So now check this out. So I'll open up the Reason Rack on the bottom, on the instrument side, and we can add any instruments we want to this. Um, we can change the instrument out. It doesn't matter. So I will go to instruments. What should I just pick here? Maybe just the uh, Europa shape-shifting synth. I'll just stick with the default, but now I've got the bass layered with this. You know, we could swap out the bass altogether if you want. You do anything you want. But now take a listen. <laughs> Kind of cool. <laughs> uh, where this really comes in handy, I generally like to play my parts in, but I do like to use arpeggiators sometimes. I like to use sound generators sometimes because you can get some weird stuff. So again, as long as it has that MIDI uh, effects version of the plugin, you can try it out with this and, and, and go to town with it because you can record those notes out. And then of course we can, you know, we can design this any way we want. It's a lot easier to edit in my opinion. But where I think this is really handy is sometimes when I'm doing electronic music, uh, I do a lot of electronic music for television. 
sometimes I just don't really have an idea of what I want to do. So what I might do is just something like this. I might just kind of come up with some random thing and then just work the track around it or, you know, use it as a component in the track. But at least it gives you a little bit of guidance. This could almost be like a video game-ish sort of action you know, kind of sequence, whatever, it could turn into anything. Another thing that I actually like to do sometimes is use that baseline generator and just have it come up with really complex bass lines. And then what I'll do is I'll learn it on my bass guitar, my actual bass guitar, and, and then I will double it. And you can get some really cool sounds that way. And also, it's kind of good practice on the bass to keep your chops up because some of these, uh, these generated bass lines can be very complex. Just Food for thought. It's like all this kind of cool stuff that you can do. But anyway, give this a try. Hope you enjoy this video. If you have any questions at all, just leave them in the comments. And as always, I try to get to everybody's questions. Uh, and I just enjoy seeing your comments if this video helped you. And for all those not subscribed, if you do like my content, please like and subscribe. And feel free to leave comments because I always love to see them. But the subscriptions definitely help build my channel. Keep being creative and keep making music, and I will see you soon.